Diana Corcoran, welcome and thank you for doing this. Thank you for having me. The very first question I always open with is, it's, it's no trick question, <laughs> <laughs> it's a serious question. Um, it is, what was the role of music in your childhood? Oh, wow. Um, I was born musical. My mum said that I was singing before I was talking. So I don't even know whether it was something she did when she was pregnant with me or what it was, but I was just drawn to anything music as well. Um, and uh, my mum and dad played music in a band before they were married, though, so I wasn't even exposed to that. So I think that was something that came through the bloodline rather than being exposed to it. Right. Yeah. And then mum and dad sort of listened to all genres of music, and I just uh, gravitated towards country, always, always gravitated towards country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was there any... When you look at that early life, were there any hints of, I'm going to end up doing this for a living and I'm going to move to Nashville? Mm -hmm. do you, where do you see the roots of, of that? Well, I actually literally just got a little bit emotional thinking about that when you, when you asked that question. Um, it always was. I had all these ideals in my head from a conscious point of view of, oh, I want to be a park ranger because I love animals. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, I want to be a paramedic because, you know, I wanted to save people and all of these things. And because I could also draw, I was, I was good at sketching as a kid. So everybody used to tell me I was going to be an artist. So it's like, oh, you're going to go off and, and be a famous painter. And so I had all these ideals, but it was almost like it was um, a given that I was going to be a music, mm -hmm. but that wasn't a choice. So right. I used to think, and I literally used to think this when I was about 11, people used to say, you're going to be an artist. You're such a good drawer. You're going to be an artist. And I used to think, oh, well, that'd be nice, but I'm going to be a singer. So, you know, I'm going to be a, I'm going to be a country music singer. So it's probably not going to get to that. It's weird. It was almost like that had to happen rather than it was a choice. That's interesting. Yeah. It was always just in my gut. I had a very strong gut feeling. When did it feel like it could be a career? Because there's quite a few people that I've spoke with who some of the you know biggest name writers in town are like I never realized you could make money doing this. Like it, it yeah. took this particular thing to. Yeah. When was that for you? I think that was definitely me as well. I never thought. I definitely never thought about money. That was just not even an option. I always thought that I would sing, but you have a job as right. well as you know, which is a job. But um, I think that. Uh, I was probably about 16 and I was entering competitions, talent quests, and in Australia we have a strong network of talent quests in little country towns that my mum and dad would drive me around to and um, the judges would write, you've got a big career ahead of you and things like that, and it's like, oh, okay, so this is a career. And I guess I, I thought of it then, but it was interesting because when I, was, uh, when I was about 18 or 19, just before I signed my record deal and had some success in Australia, I had a full-time job and I was working as a receptionist. And I remember looking out the window and I was, I was bored in this job, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there going, I just had this gut feeling that I was meant to be doing music full-time as a major career, not just, not just something small. Mm -hmm. And I remember looking out the window and going, how could I have been so wrong? How could I have been so wrong? Why am I sitting here as a receptionist? And then I, in that very instant, I went, no, I'm not wrong. I wasn't wrong. I refuse to be wrong. I just, I know. And, yeah. um, and I went out and got it. After that day, I went and, and recorded some music and got my record deal and blah, the rest is history and resigned. So. <laughs> and we're all glad you did. Yeah, um, me especially. <laughs> The reason we're talking is the, the new upcoming record, but the first sort of the lead off single off yeah. of that, God Did Good, written with two really amazing writers. Absolutely. So talk a little about being in the in the room with these guys and, sure. and putting the song together. Christian Bush and Jeff Cohen, two amazing guys. Um, Christian Bush, some of some, some folks will know him from Sugarland, but he's also got a solo um, artist career now as well. And, uh, and Jeff has written many great songs, uh, number one hits and, and songs for Band Perry and um, many artists. And I, you know, I met them and I wrote with them. This was not actually the first song we'd written. Uh, we've written a few songs that are on the album, uh, but God Did Good in particular. We were at Christian's place in Atlanta and we were producing a few things. And it was about 11 o'clock at night and I already had this idea for God Did Good. And I said, I really want to write this with you guys. And that, they were okay with the idea, but they just weren't in a rush to write it. Right. And I said, no, 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 you don't understand. I have to, we're, I'm going home tomorrow. We have to write this <laughs> song and I want to write it with you guys. So I kind of pushed for it and we wrote it that night. I think we better, went to bed at like three in the morning and then right. um, we were just plugging away at it. And then we wrote the last verse the, the very next day. And uh, 
we the moment we finished it, you know, Christian looked at me and he goes, "That's a big old country hit right there." <laughs> so I thought, okay, there's my first single. <laughs> The man knows something about hits. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, let's uh, let's hope so. So, one of the things that I thought was so interesting about that song, between the production, the lyrics, and your performance, it's this perfect three-way split of rock, oh. pop, and country. Ah, how conscious was that, or was it something when you listen to it back at, at the end and you're like, oh hey, or was that on purpose? This is what I want to create. Sure, I think that. It, you described me by then by saying that like there is definitely that three-way split in me personally and I think I'm always going to be a country artist that's who I am but this element of modern day pop and the and the rock element that that comes into that is very natural for me so I guess it's conscious in a way that that's who I am but it will anything that I kind of do in terms of my artist career will come out similar to that it'll have a pop edge but it'll always be country so um, it'll always have that country element so I think that it's uh, I, I guess there's no direct answer to that question it's it's intentional but it's intentional because that's who I am intentionally right. so um, yeah and I'm, I'm glad that you hear that too because that's what I want people to hear well, you're the producer <laughs> yes exactly you so. guide me to what you want me to hear yeah making a record for the US market was that in any way different or was it the way you describe it now, where you go, this is who I am, this is what I want, this is what flows naturally? Or was there any research done or opinions asked? Sure. Um, I never, I choose my own songs ultimately in that I don't sing anything that's not a true story. So that's that's important for you to know. I write my own music, but I don't, I don't ever do anything as an artist that is not true to me. So it's generally, mm -hmm. they're all real stories. Um, but... Um, I definitely don't necessarily the, the culling process of the, for the songs for records is not necessarily done by me. I make right. sure that I ask. I ask people in the industry. I ask the fans. I'm constantly reaching out for people's feedback, especially on single choices. And I mean, it'll be a vast variety of people too, right. um, from all different walks of life. And I make sure that I do that. I don't just choose my favorite song. So. <clears throat> I did do a lot of research in it. I did find that the Australian market is substantially, well, it seems similar until you start singing to the crowds. And then you realize that the same songs don't translate the same way. And uh, they, they seem to like a, you know, a different song over here to what the Australian market likes. So I tried to sort of get in the middle of that, meet in the middle so I could bring a little bit of freshness into America as well, because I don't want to do just the same thing. Um, and uh, yeah, but I think, uh, for example, God Did Good, I think, was more of a single that I would release in America and not in Australia as a first single. Okay. Yeah, so um, I would more sort of go with a, a poppier sort of version, I think, for uh, for Australia. Um, but I'm a no-rules girl, so, you know, just be myself and, and put it out there and, and hope for the best. And see what happens. Yeah, exactly. The As I hinted at before when we were talking, the for me, the album almost has two halves where the second half is a quite a bit calmer and a lot more introspective, with the yeah. exception of Sugar. Sure. Um, the second half is quite a bit more introspective. How on purpose was that direction of, of putting the songs together, the ordering of the songs? Uh, not on purpose, but you are the first person to notice outside of me. So... <laughs> Um, it was not on purpose in that I say when I choose when I chose the selection of what the songs what order the songs went in mm -hmm. uh, it was very musical so it was based on what key tempo right. feel not necessarily storyline so it was more the feel of the music but by the time I had finished that I realized that there were two halves and I thought do I want to go back and and correct that and make sure that that is correct and and make mm -hmm. sure that that is um, uh, that we spread the story around a little bit, uh, a little bit more. And I decided that I didn't want to do that. It sounded musically the way that it was meant to be, and I wanted people to go on an emotional journey. So it wasn't. It's kind of a roller coaster, but I don't want it to be yeah. always up and down. I want them to settle in a place where you know where they think, because music has always made me think and feel incredibly deep, mm -hmm. and I want someone to walk away from the album feeling that. Um, so I want them to have fun, but I also want them to take me seriously. 
and I think yeah. that was that was where that was. So it wasn't necessarily deliberate, but I knew it had, it had accidentally happened, and you're the first person to notice yeah. it. Yeah. So it's, it was an intuition almost. I think that so. You had, Intuition's you, a good word for it, yeah. Yeah, you putting the record together in a way mm -hmm. that worked turned yeah. out to be this. Absolutely. Which also served the music Absolutely. in the best way. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're obviously a very emotional person because you, uh, you know, you're in touch with that because you heard that and you and you felt that. Whereas I think a lot of people just sort of go, okay. But sugar was intentional. I put that right in the middle at the end to make right. sure that I didn't leave people crying. So oh, you did. Uh, <laughs> I know, I, <laughs> I know, but, but but in a good way. Absolutely. Um, and it and I I'm, I'm right there with you. I think it needs to be. For me, anything artistic, whether it's a painting or a sculpture or a piece mm -hmm. of music, yeah, it is intended to make us feel. It is intended to make us think. Absolutely, it's, it's that whole oh, I just want to have fun. Yeah, that's nice, and yeah. that should be there also. But on a deeper level, I I always do look for that. The, yeah. the records that are just, you know, the party albums mm -hmm. often don't resonate with me. Right. Probably to the extent that the artist would wish, um, but yours did because it had. Yeah, it has a, a fun God did good and it has a fun sugar, but it also Absolutely. has all that other stuff. Yeah, and I think that listeners, if they're anything like me, they're not just listening to them at a party or at a rock concert. Right. They're driving. You know, they're driving. They're in a house by themselves with the stereo going. Some of them are heartbroken. Some of them are happy. And, you know, you do want to resonate with all of those people. And I think the only deliberate thing that I did do going back to to listening to that and realizing that it had happened was sugar, is I did move sugar into that area at the end just to make sure that I didn't completely sort of put it on a plateau of <laughs> sadness but so that that was quite deliberate but yeah it's um it's all about emotions for me and but at the same time I want people to enjoy it you produced the album yourself I did who who are you as a producer I think I'll be spending the rest of my life working that out because I, uh, outside of my own career, I also produce pop things for people. And uh, but I mean, I am country, so anything that I do for myself, you know, will always have that country element. Right. Um, you know, I'm still growing as a producer. The decision to produce my own record was purely was almost pushed on me by musicians and engineers who had worked with me. They said, "You have to do your own record. Right. Stop looking for a producer for your album. You need to do this." And because I don't think I did believe in myself that much as a producer, because I'm still learning. So if it wasn't for people who knew, I mean, you know, the engineer that I work with, Eric Legg, is just, he's incredible. Um, and, uh, you know, he's a Grammy Award winner. He did the Dixie Chicks and I just, you know, a long list of amazing people. And, um, and I always admired his work. In fact, I followed his sound from Australia. I used to hear his, his sound and then I matched it all up and worked out that, oh, this sound that I love is being, is, is being created by this same engineer. So I kind of tracked him down from my childhood almost. And, uh, and he was the one who encouraged me to do it. He just looked at me one day and he, he knew that I was Ready. still learning, and, but still a little bit, I'm not good enough. I had that mentality. Right. And he turned around to me and he said, Corky, you're a great producer. And that was the moment where I just went, okay, I'm going like to do that. this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Two more things before we wrap up. One is, a, um, is Gary Burr's, the song you wrote with Gary Burr, mm -hmm. Not Ready to Lose. Was that on purpose written as a duet or no. was it just it felt right in the moment to put him on the record? Absolutely. We recorded that particular song on the day that we wrote it um, and uh, and he he put down just his vocal because we were going to pitch it for a guy song mm -hmm. and uh, it was just him and guitar and um, I kept listening to it and I went and did my own version to put on the album and I just missed his voice so much. So I called him and I said, would you be interested in doing a duet? Because I just, I do not want to remove your voice from this song. Right. And he said, okay, well, do you want me to come in and re-record it? And I said, no. I said that just the raw vulnerability of the day that we wrote it is perfect. Mm -hmm. Send me the files and I'll, I'll mix around with it a little bit and put my vocals on it and turn it into a duet. And that's what happened. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So it's pretty, it's uh, pretty organic, that song. Yep. Yeah. And then the last minute, like I warned you, well, this, uh -oh. in the tradition of Bernard Pivot, <laughs> and James Lipton, uh, do a little questionnaire. What is your favorite word? Oh, whoa. Favorite word? My gosh. That's hard. Out of all the words in the English dictionary, you want me to pick a favorite? Yes. Um... Oh. 
Holy crap. That, is that like, could be the favorite one. Holy crap. There you go, crap. No, maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, kitty, because I like cats. I don't know. And Or rambunctious. I love the word oh, rambunctious. Nice. I love throwing that in there. Or discombobulated. We'll, we'll, go, with, we'll go with all of those. Okay. Discombobulated okay. kitty. There you go. <laughs> and what is your least favorite hard. word? My least favorite word. Well, I probably can't say it on camera, but doily. I feel like everybody, I don't feel like anyone likes the word doily. There is something about it. A lot of people won't know what it is. A doily is like the, what your grandma has, those little crocheted, you know, knitted crocheted things that you put your With tea teapot pots on. on. Yeah. yeah. What is your favorite sound? Favorite sound. Mmm. I can tell you my least favorite sound is a lawnmower because my dad used to get cranky while the lawnmower was running. So I'll Which is the next question, that. so we got that covered. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. I can't stand the lawnmower um, because of what it represents to my childhood. <laughs> uh, and uh, favorite sound would have to be um, probably a piano. I just I love uh, a grand piano being played just lightly and beautifully, yeah. What is your? What do you consider your main positive character trait main positive character trait is that i don't ever stop believing in myself i truly believe and what is a character trait you'd still like to improve on uh the fact that even though i believe in myself i still get negative and sometimes try to convince myself i can't do it what is your favorite swear word mm. there's two joined together shit balls <laughs> and finally what is an inspirational quote or a motivational thought that you keep close to you i've probably got a, a whole ton of them because i i do just i like to remember those things but just um i think i think um pick pick a job that you love and you'll never have to work a day in your life that's a good one it's a very good one. Mm -hmm. And you did? I did. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much.